Hallelujah. Can we give Jesus a big hand one more time? Please be seated. God bless you. It's always a joy to be here. When uh, Reverend Steve calls, you don't say no. Amen. You have to reschedule and make sure you are here. When the father calls, it's absolutely important. So I feel honored one more time to have been invited to be here. Shall we appreciate our general overseer? <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Songs of Solomon chapter 2 verse 15 is where we get the scripture, Little Foxes. Little Foxes. It says, catch us, catch for us. That's the NIV. It says, catch for us the foxes. The little foxes that ruin the vineyards, our vineyards that are in bloom. The King James says, is the little foxes that spoil the vine. Is the little foxes that spoil our businesses. Is the little foxes that spoil our ministries. They are little, little foxes, little, little things that sometimes we overlook. And because of that, you know, there's a saying when we're growing up, it says, little drops of water make a mighty ocean. Little, little things that you also, ex you, you stop doing then it results in failure, either in your business or your ministry. Now, you see, there's a universal law that cuts across, whether it's ministry, industry, business, entertainment, whatever. That one law, which if you violate, failure results. And that one law is from Joshua 1, 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but thou shalt meditate on it day and night, and observe to do, not observe to quote, observe to do. If you observe the principles of God's word, it will work whether in business, in industry, entertainment, ministry, church. It's a universal law. The law works. Pastor Matthew recently, some, I heard this from someone, they said, Pastor Matthew met um, uh, a sheikh, an Arab sheikh, very rich man, very, very wealthy individual. And uh, he visited a gentleman in his home. And when he got to the house, they were chatting, and then Pastor Matthew asked him, what's the secret behind your wealth? I mean, your wealth is, this, this is filthy rich, serious. Business success, I mean, everything is working for this sheik. Everybody say sheik. Say, I didn't, look at him, I didn't say sick, I say sheik. Sheik, sheik. we're talking about this. <laughs> Arab gurus, the magnets, powerful. He says, listen to this. What is the secret behind your success and your filthy rich wealth? What's the secret? Then the man said, I'm coming. He went into his bedroom. A sheikh, he's not born again Christian, no prophet, no cardinal. Went into his bedroom, came out with a Bible in his hand. And then Pastor Matthew asked him, what is this? He said, this is the secret behind my success. An Arab sheikh. He said, this is the secret behind what? My success. You see, most millionaires and wealthy people, the principles behind their success, like I said, is universal. It's the word. They are, we have the principles of Christ and we have the person of Christ. But sometimes we just focus on the person of Christ, but we don't focus on the principles of Christ. We have the PP, principles of Christ, which is the principle this Arab sheikh. Most successful people and businessmen and millionaires are using the principles in the Bible. They just don't call it, it's from the Bible. But this Arab sheikh was bold enough to say, this is my secret, the Bible. He said, anytime I need new ideas, I open this book. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Speak the word, think the word, act the word, behave the word, become the word. The word. Wealth is a product of wisdom, and wisdom is the Bible. No, when Solomon, God said, ask me what you want. He said, I just want wisdom and an understanding heart. God said, because you didn't ask for riches, I'll give you the wisdom plus everything, that you, including riches. Wisdom gives birth to riches. And wisdom is the book in our hand. 
God's wisdom. You see, there are four kinds of wisdom. Diabolical wisdom, sensual wisdom, earthly wisdom, and divine wisdom. Divine wisdom, which is the word. The word. Not Nollywood, not Bollywood, not Ghana wood, not Nigeria wood. Bible wood. If you don't clap, I will do something to you. It's the Bible. The little foxes that we have left behind is the way, the principles. God says, the principle, give, you shall receive. It amazes me how some of the businessmen and businesswomen, when it comes to business, say, hey, don't bring Bible in this. We are in business. You cannot separate the scriptures from business. Everything was created by the word, including business. Jacob outwitted Laban and became richer than his boss, Laban. His, Jacob, an employee, became richer than his employer because of divine wisdom. Yeah. To the extent that Laban looked at Jacob and said, I have learned by experience or by divination that God has made me rich because of you. As a businessman, you will be an atmosphere changer. I said after this summit will be an atmosphere changer. Your business will change atmospheres. If you use the principles of the word, do, do the word, your business will flourish and become distinguished. Look, there is no new thing under the sun. Do the word. Let everything that you do in your business be governed by the word. First thing you must do is be, you want to be a successful business person, be a God chaser. It's in my, my new book, Secrets of High Achievers. Be a God chaser. Listen, God owns the earth, the universe, and everything that is in it. Don't you think God knows how to show you where things are? Anything you need to, what will, what will prosper? He can tell you what will prosper. This book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth, but thou shalt meditate on it, think on it, do it, observe to do, and you shall make your way prosperous, and you shall have good success. There's good success and bad success. Good success is guaranteed by the word. He will show you where to invest, where not to invest, when to step out, when not to step out. But many people have left God when we're talking about business, let's leave God out. No, he is the main thing. He's the main person. He owns the earth. He can tell you where the gold is, the diamond is, what, who to invest, associations you must deal, work with, and associations you must never, ever. Some of the little foxes are, some of, the, some of us, the thing that is not working in our lives is because of some people we call friends. Association is very important. There's, there's no neutrality in association. In life, you're either going up, staying on one floor, or going to the basement based on your associations. Every leader chooses his associations based on his destination. Where are you going? That's what should determine the people you associate yourself with. Some of the little foxes are wrong associations. Psalm 1, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the Lord. It comes back to the word again. His delight is in the Lord. And in his law that he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree. His business shall be like a tree planted by the live fruit, living water, bringing forth his fruit in his season. Tell your neighbor, you cannot do without the word. Say, let the foundation be the word. Let your going out and coming in be the word. One of the little foxes about businesses is some people don't tithe from their business profits. One of the things you have to do, our church, I tithe as a pastor, 20% of my income goes to God's house every week. Every money that comes into my hand, 20% belongs to God. Then my church and my business, the Leaders Factory International, of all my profits, 10% goes to God. The heavens must not only be open over you individually, the heavens must also be open over your business. Your amen has gone. Amen. If you don't clap. Amen. The secret behind redeemed. 
apart from prayer and everything else, another secret is tithing out of their profits. The secret behind winners is 10% of Papa's tithe goes to his church, 10% of the entire business university church, 10% is given out, either to redeem or to whatever ministry God tells him to give to. So the heavens are open, no frustration, no pressure, divine ideas. In my book on tithing and offering, there are about 21 things you get out of tithing. You must start tithing. It's called it's personal tithe and corporate tithe. Abraham tithe from his corporate blessings that he got from the war. So if you want open heavens over your personal life, you tithe personally. And tithe is 10% and it's from the gross, not the net. Amen has gone again. Amen. I can hear some of you asking, why did they bring this man again? Well, I'm in your face. I'm here. You can't run away from me. I am here. You want your business to succeed. Little foxes are tithe. I can tithe grow my business. Little fox. You think it's insignificant. Like that woman, the widow. They asked her, what do you have in your house? She said, I have nothing but a little oil. That is the problem. You, this, you, she didn't put too much emphasis and importance on the oil. Meanwhile, the oil was what was going to make her. Her wealth was inside her all along as she was looking outside. Man of God. Um, things are not working. What must I do? He was expecting the man of God to release some bayesious, kelewele, kelewele, banku prayer. The man of God asked one question. Your prosperity is not outside you. It's inside you. Your prosperity is not outside you. It's inside you. A man's gift shall make room for him. Your gift, your business gift, business acumen, your wisdom, your wealth creating abilities, your creativity, your innovation is inside you. What you need to become everything you must be and your business to become what you must be is inside you. A man's gift from which we get the word giving. So you can't run away from the giving too. Whichever way you pass, the giving, you can't run away from it. When I write books, 10% of, of it is given to charity, given to people, pastors, people for free. 10% of my books, my products. The tithe is the key. You can't run. You can't fight it. You can't argue with what is working. That thing has been working for me since 1989. 19 what? Before you were born. If you don't clap, you will reduce your age. You tithe personally to your church. Then you tithe from the profits. I didn't say from the capital. I said, when you put in 10,000 to start your business, then within a six months, you made a profit of 1,000. You tithe on the 1,000 to your church. But as a matter of fact, if you are nice to me, I'll tell you about the first, but you may be angry with me, but I'm already here, so let me tell you. As a matter of fact, the first bonus you get, first salary you get, first profit you get, is supposed to be first fruit, Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. First fruit is not the same as tithe. Little foxes. First fruit, if you look in the Bible, there's a chapter, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, it tells you in one chapter, and in several verses in one chapter, in that same chapter, it tells you bring the first fruit and bring the tithe in one verse. That tells you they are not the same. First fruit is the very first. At the beginning of every year, for my ministry to succeed, for my business to succeed, my leadership training to succeed, for my appointments in preaching in nations, for it to succeed and be impactful, first week of every year, I give my whole salary as first fruit to God or to my spiritual father. So when I say I cannot be poor, my business will not fail, my ministry will not fail, it's not theory, it's a reality. Because I, it's not confession, I have professed before confessing. I have done things backing what I'm saying. First fruit, Proverbs 3, 9 and 10 says, Honor the Lord with thy substance. And with the first fruit of all your increase, profit, so shall your bank account or your bonds be filled with plenty and your presses, your minds are burst out with new ideas, creativity, innovation, which was what Jacob used to outwit Laban. Are you understanding what I'm saying? 
You see, the world generates ideas, natural ideas. But as a child of God, you must generate divine ideas which supersedes that of natural ideas. And that can only come when you are a first fruiter and a tither and a giver plus working hard and working smart and the other principles of business. But it begins with tithing, first fruit, my first salary given to God, beginning of the year. End of the year, I give 365 pounds. Every day I put aside one pound every day to sow into the kingdom. Then I give to missions. Another thing about your business, you must partner with your church. Your business must partner with your church missions to qualify for Philippians 419. Anytime you quote Philippians 419 without doing Philippians 415, you are a 419. This clapping has gone to Makola. Charlie, the clapping is suspect on the left hand side. I thought I was speaking to businessmen and businesswomen. We are adding to what you are already doing that is already working. We are adding to it so you go to the next level. Adding. You've heard a lot, you've been practicing a lot. Papa said you have been seeing breakthroughs. You are not just going to see breakthroughs. You are going to see breakouts. You will break out to the left. Break out to the right. Break out to the north. Break out to the south. Break out to the east. Break out to the west. Break out internationally. Am I hearing an amen here? Am I hearing an amen here? He said when you tithe, I will open the windows of heaven. Not the windows of Ghana. Charlie, this thing works so. I came to I Plus with my family. I bought the tickets for my whole family. Cash. Nothing missing, nothing broken in my bank account. <laughs> bought their ticket. We bought the family bought tickets. I plus you don't you don't come expecting love offering or ticket to be paid. No, no. You come and sow. So we came to sow into pastors' lives and leaders' lives from regions everywhere. We came to sow. When I, before I go back, I know something will happen to my pocket. And when I get there, it will happen to my house and my car. This clapping is too envious. At the partnership, Paul said to the Macedonian Christians, because you gave to my ministry once and again, not once and for all, some people give once, January. They don't give again. And they are claiming big businesses and big cars. You must give consistently. Tithe consistently. First fruit consistently. Your profits that you get, the very first profit, you must bring it. The very first 50 pound profit. The very first one, you must bring it and put it into the man of God's hands. It's in the scriptures. Leviticus 23, Ezekiel 44. Leviticus 23 says, bring the very first fruit to your priests. He didn't say to the church. He said to the priest. And he said, the priest will do certain things for you. He will lift up that, that seed and he will wave it. He will wave it and when he waves it, he will pronounce, let this offering be acceptable for you. Then Ezekiel 44 verse 30, he says, the moment he prays that prayer over you, from that day, blessings will never cease coming to your house. But you see, we have abandoned that scripture. We've talked first fruit and then tithe are the same. No, they are not. They are not. Kenneth Copeland, I learned this from Kenneth Copeland, from Keith Moore. These are the gurus. Kenneth Copeland has given 27 jets out. Which one have you given out? <laughs> if somebody is doing something that is working for them and you, you, you don't know about it, the moment you discover the skills to their success, you must start plugging in. 27 jets. I've not even given one, two cars away. How much more jets? So when somebody's already there, I need to find out what is it that they are doing, that their business, their ministry, their, their thing is working. It's working. See, he opens the windows of heaven over your business. So heavens are open over your business, over your career, over your profession for tithing. But first fruit. He fills your mind with divine ideas and your, pre your presses burst out with new wine and your bank account is filled with plenty to undertake more projects and build up more buildings. Everybody shout first fruit. Everybody shout, say tithe. 
Then everybody say, gift to part. Say, partner with your missions ministry. Say that. Say it again. Paul said in Philippians chapter 4, 15 to 19, you gave unto my necessity and to support my missionary trips once and again. Then he concluded by saying, therefore. You see, anytime you see therefore, find out what the therefore is there for. If you don't clap. In mathematics, you see A minus this, and then you say therefore, therefore is because of the above. You cannot quote Philippians 4.19 without referring to the above. They gave to Paul's missionary trips. Day of helps. Crusade in Tamale, Gosu, Takrani. They gave to, they became partners. They were partners. Partners. Partners of his ministry. So you partner your business. Partners with rural work. Christ to the rural world. Mission trips. You partner. So the anointing that is working on the man of God also begins to work in your life. See, tithe brings its results. First food brings its result. General offering brings its result. Give it to the poor brings its result. Give it to your biological parents brings its result. Give it to your spiritual parents brings its result. Give it generally. Deuteronomy 16, 16 brings its result. You see, we are doing different things, but sometimes we don't bring in the giving thing because we think it is that separate business from God. If you are in the house, say, I'm in the house. Not tithing from your business profits. Now, say that with me so I know that you heard what I said, so I won't go back to it. Say, not tithing from your business profits. What did I say you should tithe on? I didn't say the capital you used to start the business. Do you understand that? 10,000, you used it to start. Then you made a profit of 1,000. That first 1,000, what should happen to it? To who? To CEM. To CEM. No, to CEM. To who? The person is in the Bible. Is there? Leviticus 23. Read it. Bring it to the priest. And the priest shall wave it. Shall wave it. You need to see him wave it. When people bring me first food, they stand. I say, what are you waiting for? He said, Bishop, you say you must wave it. <laughs> the scripture says you must wave it and declare with your mouth as a man of God that this thing will, the offerings are acceptable for me. And then he said, you must pronounce Ezekiel 44, 30, that from today, blessings will rest in my house and in my, some people's blessings comes and goes. Ezekiel first fruit makes sure your blessings don't come and go. They rest. Yeah. They rest on your business. Somebody shout a big amen there. And the first of all, the first fruits of all things, see, of all, and every oblation of all, of every sort of oblation, the word oblations means offerings, shall be the who? Shall be, shall be the CEM. Shall be action. Shall be central. Shall be whose? That first fruit must be brought to the priest. Shall be the priest, and ye shall also give unto the priest the first, the first of your dough, that he may cause what? The blessing to what? Rest on your house or rest on your business. From today, your business will not fail again. There will be rest in your business. There will be peace in your business. Expansion in your business. Apply the principle of the first fruit and then apply Malachi chapter 3, verse 8 to 12. That is the tithe. Now, another um, little fox is crookedness. Write it down. Crookedness. Avoid crookedness. In your, business, in your business. Avoid all crookedness. Be honest. Don't do 419. Don't do kalabule. Don't do crookedness. If you want your business to succeed, do it legitimately. Let it be legit. Did I hear amen? amen? Then apathy. Apathy towards your business. Punctuality in your business is very important. You know, some people start businesses and they're supposed to start at 730 and they will sleep, ah, and then get there and open the door at 11. Your customers have come at 8, and they are sleeping. And then they will be binding witches and demons who don't exist. I bind the demon that's not bringing the customers. No, it was your sleeping. 
a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the arms to sleep, and poverty shall come on you like an armed bandit. That shall not be your portion. Amen. So when it comes to business, look at your neighbor and say, be very professional about your business. Say it again. Avoid, write this down, avoid laziness as well. Avoid laziness. And this next one is a big deal. Little foxes, a lack of excellence. Many people do things. Yes, a tailor sold something for me the other day. And the thread was hanging. The thread was hanging. And I said, Nick <laughs> And this, this, this. This thread or this rope, what is it? Oh, I paid big money for these trousers. I should be walking around with this thread. Look at that. I was lifting my hand and a thing tore. Instead of him telling me, he didn't use the right measurement. He's telling me I have put on weight. Why was Daniel preferred about, above all the other people? The Bible says Daniel had an excellent spirit. And even the Bible describes Jesus as an excellent person. It said Jesus did all things well. Make sure your product. That's why when I'm printing books, I'm very, very particular. I dot my eyes and I cross my teeth. If I send it to the printers and I look through it and I see one mistake, spelling mistake or a comma somewhere or colon is going back. Why? My name, my reputation and everything is behind the product. You must make sure that your product and your business is such that people will cross oceans, bypass other people's businesses just to come for yours. Did I hear the amen there? Amen. Tell your neighbor, be excellent. Say be excellent. Yes. Say be very professional. Yes. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let me close with these habits of high achievers. Habits of high achievers. Write these things down, please, if you can, as we round up. If you want to be a successful businessman, a businesswoman, these are habits of successful businessmen, habits of high achievers. Number one, plan while others are playing. Plan, plan while others are playing. Plan while others are playing. Start planning. You see, failing to plan is planning to fail. Failing to plan is what? Planning to fail. You must be a planner. You must be a planner. You must be a generational planner, a generational thinker, and a generational builder. You must build with generations in mind. When you pass away, or when you are out of town, you've gone to Dubai, or you've gone to Qatar, you've gone for a business conference, there's, how does your business operate when you are not around? Does it operate just like you when you are there, or do people slow down? Success without a successor is failure. It's important that when you are building your business, you must think generations, generations, generations. What will happen? Today we still hear of Hilton. Today we still hear of Rockefeller Foundation because they built generational. Look at your neighbor and say, failing to plan is planning to fail. So tell them, build with generations in mind. You know, God describes himself as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Three generations. And Bible says, a good man shall leave an inheritance to what? His children. So, you don't just think of your children. Think of third generation. Plan in such a way that you're covering what? The third, second and what? Third generation. So, number one, plan while others are what? Playing. Number two, steady while others are sleeping. Because you must upgrade. What got you to where you are in your business or ministry is not enough to keep you there and move you to the next level. So steady whilst others are sleeping. This is the difference between success stories and non-success stories, achievers and non-achievers. Steady while others are what sleeping. Steady for the next. These days, 
Everything is changing so fast. What you thought you, you're using this phone today. Tomorrow they come and they say, it's another, another Samsung or iPhone. And it's got all manner of stuff. So you need to be in steady mode. I tell people, I don't get ready. I stay ready. Like when I was coming to Ghana, I never knew Bishop would call me to teach here. But because I'm always in steady, readiness mode. He said, Tuesday. I said, I'm coming. Because I'm in readiness mode. Get back to our soul. Father. <laughs> Somebody's looking for your products and they are ready to buy. Father, back or to father. You should be in readiness mode. Get your products a lot in advance. Prepare the place excellently done. They say, President is coming to visit. Now you are coming to paint. You should have painted before the man came. Steady while others are sleeping. Your future, listen to this, your future is not determined by what you earn, but by what you learn and what you do with what you learn. Your future is not determined by what you earn, the money you earn. Your future is determined by what you learn and what you do with what you learn. So you must steady, steady, whilst others are sleeping. Number three, decide. Whilst others are delaying, as a business person, as a minister, as a successful person, you must decide whilst others are procrastinating. You see, whether you decide or don't decide, you have decided. Yeah. <laughs> Deciding not to decide is a decision. Are you moving to set up a branch in Akoto Lante? Um, I'm decided. Paco. We are going for a conference with Dubai. What are you doing? Okay. My twin brother, Bishop Gideon did your fair. He says, this is the way he lives. He says, he'll be sleeping and all of a sudden when he wakes up, he'll remember, hey, my friends must be moving fast. I better get up and do something. <laughs> He's he just sleeping, resting a bit. Then when he wakes up, he says, hey. Hey. <laughs> Promptness, agency. You know, there are three kinds of people. People who live ahead of schedule, people who live on schedule, and people who are even behind schedule, they don't even know they are behind schedule. If you don't clap. <laughs> Things are moving, but they don't even know. The worst are people in our churches who, convention is this week, and the convention, but they baho, na membia, oh, convention, but... <laughs> <laughs> you, a partner of your pastor's ministry, convention came, women's convention came and passed, and you are a woman, and you didn't know. At the women's convention, maybe. This week, eh? And when things are passing you by, you go and organize 41 days of fasting to break Jesus' record of 40 days. Tell your neighbor, be on schedule. Better still, be ahead of schedule. Look, foolish people waste time. Average people spend time. Wise people invest time. I, I put something on Facebook the other day. A caption with my picture at the, and then I bought a caption. I have no lazy day. I don't have a lazy day. Every day I'm doing something towards my destination. Every day. You see, Abraham Lincoln said, I don't care much about anybody who's not wiser today than they were yesterday. I don't care much about anybody who's not wiser today than they were. In your field, you must be a master. You must be the best. They must bypass everybody to come looking for your business. Receive that grace. Receive that anointing. Receive that favor. Receive that blessing. Decide while others are procrastinating. There's a procrastination society in America. I hope they are not in Ghana. Their motto is never do today what you can do tomorrow. And never do tomorrow what you can do the day after tomorrow. So every tomorrow comes, they are not doing anything. That shall not be your story. Next one, prepare whilst others are daydreaming. Live in preparation mode. Always be prepared for the next move of your business. Live in preparation mode. Live in preparation mode. 
Prepare whilst others are procrastinating. Prepare whilst others are procrastinating and then begin whilst others are stagnant. Begin the next phase. Begin it. Start it. Don't wait for anybody. Move. Be, you are either in movement or becoming a monument. Life is such that you are either in movement or becoming a monument, a relic, or a museum. Yeah. Last, the first time I came here, this building was under construction. Somebody was in movement. We met in the basement. Look at here. Movement. That shall be your person in the name of Jesus. The leader of the organization and the leaders are always in movement. May your business be in movement. Six, work whilst others are wishing. Work, work whilst others are what? Wishing. He says, seest thou a man that is diligent in his business? He shall not stand before mean men. He shall stand before nobles. I discovered from that scripture, Proverbs 22, 29, that the audience you address is based on your diligence. Proverbs 22, 29, he says, seest thou a man or a woman? Diligent, hard working in his business. He said, He shall not stand before mean men or ordinary men, but he shall stand before nobles. So it's your diligence that determines whether you stand before Reverend Steve and Reverend Stanley or Okrokoto Krokoto. Yeah. It's your diligence. Do you want to meet influential men? Affluential men is based on your diligence, not just prayer. How diligent are you? The word diligent is a nice brothelized word, but the real meaning is hard work. Hard work. You must work hard. People are sleeping. You must get up, be burning the midnight oil. My family is watching TV on Saturday because they are not preaching on Sunday. And I'm preaching on Sunday, and I've discovered that Saturday determines Sunday. So Saturday, I don't watch TV. I stay in the book, in the Bible, reading, praying, preparing the meal for the dignitaries on Sunday. So when I hit the place on Sunday, within three minutes, fire. When they invited me to preach at I plus, first appointment, within three minutes, everybody was standing. <laughs> fire. The mafia bonoko. Shit. We did. Bishop, we did three minutes. They were standing, shouting, screaming. Fire. Wow. Wow. Look, yesterday determines you are where you and I are where we are today because of what we did or didn't do yesterday. Where we will be tomorrow will be based on what we are doing today or not doing today. So it's not leave the witches out. Leave the wizards out. You are too powerful for witches to determine things for you. When you are making determinations in the spirit. Witch and wizard. Your money, and your business, and you are accepting that it's the witch. A bad thing, or you would say. You fight midnight or you fight in the midnight. Lift up your head, all ye gates. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Let the king of glory come into my business. Are you clapping or what are you doing, my God? Don't tell me we separate business from God, we separate Christianity from business. It is intertwined. It's, it is actually the foundation, like the foundation that women put on their face. Foundation. If you don't clap, I will do something to you, and I'm not afraid of you. Hey. This Tuesday, 
businesses is putting fire down your life to ensure your business is always on fire. Pragmatic, current effect. The one that people buy, they choose yours beyond others. Fire. You must, you must choose yours above others. Why do people bypass churches in this in town and Temakumasi and come to see him? Share foundation. Meaning care. Meaning care. Meaning care. That's the foundation of your business. Tithing, first food, giving, prayer, doing the word. Behaving the word, becoming the word, your business becoming the word. So it is a preferred business. Plan whilst others are playing. Move whilst others are sitting. Be in movement. Live carry forward. Pray. I pray carry forward. I pray carry forward. I even do things for my wife carry forward and I cast it later with signs and wonders at night. Envy is too big. The envy is too much here. I give her gifts, carry forward, and cash it. Invest and cash it. You say, okay, no need me, her boy. Some people like to do. You know, there are so, Bishop, there are so many people, lastminute.com people in London. Lastminute.com. No fear number, me cash it, last minute. Then number three. It may be too late. You must have competitive advantage over your competitors. You must have competitive advantage over your competitors. Just in case you think you don't have competitors, look around. It may be sitting next to you. Competitive, and what gives you competitive advantage? Is diligence and excellence. What is different? What is the difference between the, this, your competitors' products and yours? What's the difference? Only one thing: skill, excellence. Everybody is endowed with endowed skills. You were born with it, but you need to add acquired skill. You don't. You have a gift of singing. It's raw. You don't sell your gift raw. You add skill, excellence through training. To your, they, they, they pay more for your skill than your raw gift. Agree that, agree that. That's the, the gift you had when you were born. That's the agree that, agree that. But when you go to training, they'll teach you how great thou art. Charlie, those who are not clapping for me. Oh, no, let me let me let me let me let me let me are you screaming? <laughs> yeah, you got the product, all right? The cement, the building, architecture, the this, the this. The difference between why they are coming to that one and not coming to yours, or coming to yours and not going to theirs, is the skill you have added and the foundation. If the foundation be destroyed, what is the foundation of your business? Are you a tither? Are you a seed sower? Are you an investor? Are you a partner of a successful ministry? Are you a prayer machine? Do you pray? Is your prayer only about food? Or prophesying against Pelatia and Jezaniah? <laughs> Enemies against your business. Is your prophesy against them? Lift up your head, O ye gates, Psalm 24. Warfare. Warfare surrounds the birthing of great things. If you are not prepared for war, Bishop Dark told us, if you are not prepared for war, resign. Resign from ministry. Actually, resign from Christianity. If you are not prepared for war, me no dana me keme no. One horse man, me horse man, le one horse man, me one tomato, me no dana me keme no. Look at your face. A member of CEM, look at your face. Oh, fo. Let the lion in you roar. Let the lion in you roar. Rise up and make some noise here. My God. Let the lion in you roar. Lift up your hands and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. My God. 
Let the lion in you roar over your business. Sheda kapata. Rado se prete prelelus. Shika yada laba laba doli madaya. Lift up your hands and begin to pray. Wage war in the spirit. Wage war in the heavenlies. Wage war in the heavenlies. Wage war in the heavenlies. Your business must move to the next level. Whatever is hindering it, whatever obstacle, move it out of the way. Lift your voice and pray. Shaka yada laba. Rado lababa. Lift your voice and pray. In Jesus' name, say in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I decree, I decree all gangaps and gangings of hell, gangings of hell refusing, my business, refusing my business entry into enlargement. Into enlargement. I bind you now bind you in now. the name of Jesus. Name all of gangaps Jesus. and gangings from, from hell fighting against, fighting against my enlargement. My enlargement. I Bind you now in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Bind all gangings of hell. Bind all ganging of conspiracies. My business is moving to the next level. Marentale Mazori, Ira Mabash, Sanere Bebele Mabor, Omo Sopro Mabola Mosso, Ika Yandere Mola 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 Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. All evil fingers. All evil fingers that have pointed. That have pointed and are pointing. And are pointing at my business. At my business. At my career. At my career. At my profession. At my profession. In an evil way. In an evil way. With a with a now. 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 In the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Command all evil fingers. All evil fingers. Pointing at your ministry. Pointing at your church. Pointing at your business. Pointing at your family. They must wither now. Wither now. Wither now. Wither now. Wither now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. All evil mouths. All evil mouths. Against us. Against us. Our church. Our church. Our business. Our business. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Suffer paralysis now. Suffer paralysis. Suffer paralysis now. Suffer paralysis. All evil mouths. All evil mouths. Speaking against. Speaking against. My business. My business. My church. My, church. my life. My life. 
my family, my family suffer paralysis. Suffer paralysis. Now in the name now of Jesus, name of lift Jesus. your voice and pray. All evil mouths directed against us, directed against our ministry, directed against our business, directed against our success, directed against our enlargement. Suffer paralysis now. Suffer paralysis now. Say we command. We command all non well wishes. All non well wishes. Witches. Witches. Wizards. Wizards. Sorcerers. Sorcerers. Militating. Militating against our prosperity. Against our prosperity. Suffer blindness now. Suffer blindness in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. We command all witches, wizards, sorcerers, militating against our prosperity. Suffer blindness now. Suffer blindness now. Suffer blindness now. One more say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We command. We command. All satanic plots. All satanic plots. And schemes. And schemes. In satanic incubators. In satanic incubators. And wombs. And wombs. May they miscarry. May they miscarry. May they miscarry. May they miscarry. We decree. We decree all satanic plots, all satanic, plots satanic schemes, satanic schemes diabolical, conspiracies, diabolical conspiracies in satanic incubators in satanic incubators, and satanic wombs. We command them to miscarry. We command them to miscarry and suffer dry breasts. And suffer dry breasts. In the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Cancel all satanic plots. Satanic Schemes in satanic incubators. Ah, we override, we override, we override, we override, we override, we override all satanic schemes, satanic plots against our business, against our church, against our ministry, against our success. We command them to miscarry and suffer dry breath. Miscarry. Say this together, lift up your hands, say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We decree. We decree. No weapon. No weapon. Formed against us. Formed against us. Our ministries. Our ministries. Our churches. Our churches. Our businesses. Our businesses. Our careers. Our careers. Our professions. Our professions. Our families. Our families. It shall not prosper. It shall not prosper. It shall not prosper. No divination. No divination. No spells. No spells. No enchantments. No enchantments. Against us. Against us. Shall stand. By the blood. Oh Jesus, lift your voice and pray. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. 
every tongue that has risen against us, our rise against us in judgment, we condemn it in the name of Jesus. No divination, no enchantment, no divination, no enchantment, no sorcery, no no enchantment, no divination, by the blood, 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 by Somebody shout the big amen. amen. Give Jesus a big clap offering in the house. You provoke the blood. Now apply the blood of Jesus over your life. He caught us. Apply the blood. Apply the blood. The blood, the blood of sprinkling. 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 In the name of Jesus. He fell in the blood of sprinkling. In Jesus' name. We're going to have the anointing oil session now. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You know this song? You are the God that opens every door. You are the God that opens every door. You are the God that who makes the lame to walk. You are the God who makes the blind eyes see. You are the God who gives me victory. You are the God
you feel about.